as we can see, I'm going to try to pull up the chart real quick, the technicalities of it. We are in just this major zone right now where no one really knows where it's going to be heading within these next few days. Or at least that's what a lot of the retail trader sentiment is. Now, if we see over here, though, I'm going to actually pull up a different chart later on. Uh, we can see some indicators over here, right? MACD, and then we also have RSI. But let's go ahead and just consider one more fundamental news that we have. And that is that Elon Musk has yet to sell his full Tesla position. Uh, I believe that he is currently above that 5% mark, which would represent half of his 10%. So we're almost halfway there, but we can't ignore the fact that we are still not 100% there yet uh, where he would fulfill his 10% selling position or where he would sell all those shares. Um, right over here, we are at a critical support level right now just because we have this insane wick over here and we actually tested the support. I do want to say, however, I'm going to try to see if I could pull up a different chart and it looks like it will allow me. Yeah, I want to talk about this index fund right over here, the S&P 500. Uh, we could also pull up a different volatility index to see where the market was today. And if you look at any volatility index today, really, you could see that a lot of it was just down, except obviously the VIX. And the VIX was up today, understandably, right? Because the way this works is it's basically an inverse. Uh, it's the fear index, or at least that's what a lot of people say it is. People have a lot of different definitions. But regardless, let's just say it is the fear index for today's video because, again, so many people want to call it so many different things. I'm not 100% certain that this whole entire VIX movement to the upside was because of what I'm sure many of you guys have been hearing about uh, right now with a lot of these new strains and such and such. I really don't want to get too much into that in today's video, but... Anyways, I wanted to tell you that if you guys were wondering why Tesla was down uh, for today's day, especially, I am going to be talking about the next few days, though, that $850 share price target. I just think that it wasn't necessarily Tesla's fault today uh, because the entire market was down. Now, we're going to talk more about that later on. I just want to quickly see what Kathy Wood is doing. Regardless of what she is or is not doing with Tesla, this equity still, we can still see a little bit of better understanding for where her sentiment is. If she's selling more, if she's buying more. Remember that Kathy Wood likes to have 10% at most, usually, most of the time, towards Tesla. So, let's see. So, in the beginning of November, or actually not even the beginning of November, let's see if we can try to understand this from a larger time frame. Uh, more margin of time and so okay so november 30th she has 1.6 million shares of tesla and then we could see that if we go a little bit lower let's just say to the beginning of november she had 2.16 million shares so 2.16 million and now she's at 1.64 that is very interesting and you can see even the portfolio allocation went from 11.75 percent to 10.27 percent again very very interesting i do believe though if i'm not mistaken let's go quickly back to november 1st i believe this was when tesla hit around that 1300 dollars per share so going to november 1st that was about 1200 dollars so 1200 dollars right there that actually does make a lot of sense and that's just how arc invest likes to rebalance their portfolio so as you just stated what kathy wood decides to do is not going to change the entire market especially not for tesla but it will give us some sort of hints as to why she is deciding to sell whether she thinks right now is the time to start to rebalance your portfolio, considering that Tesla did go up an insane amount. And so now we have the chart on a larger time frame, and just so we can understand a little bit more clear as to where Tesla could be headed, or at least this is what I'm really going to be waiting for. Again, I'm not a financial advisor, but this is where I truly want to start adding more to my Tesla position. Um, hopefully you guys understand that I am a Tesla believer uh, long term. Again, that's why I said I'm not going to be talking so much as for the long term of Tesla, because again, I think that this is is probably going to be at least a $3,000 stock in the future. But let's go ahead and talk now about some of the near-term time frames. And that is to say that I would not be surprised if Tesla did retrace all the way back to $850 a share, even lower, in fact, around $837 dollars a share you guys get what i'm trying to say and i would even be less surprised if we went all the way and retraced about to 970 dollars per share and that is because tesla has a history right we are basing this not off sentiment we are trying to base this off of history and what the price has shown us in the past and we could see all the way dating back to when tesla was just basically starting out obviously in the beginning it had a lot of retracements so let's not really take that into consideration but if we move a little bit to the right we could see it definitely does always go back inevitably right that's the word that we really should be using here it is an inevitability that tesla usually retraces back to a lot of these technical indicators and this one would be pointing to about 970 dollars a share and so we can even say that this retracement goes a little bit further down because how many times has tesla decided to go to this red line right over here and we're even going to get some rectangles just to highlight all these points so we have one right over here and then i believe that there is definitely more uh, so we go to the red line once and then we almost go here twice and then let's see even more 
we definitely go here. I remember here, we decided to add the dip. I got a lot of shares around that $500 share level. Now we're over here. So it decided to have a complete upside momentum. And that makes sense because Tesla was in a lot of a stagnation and stagnation is not going to hurt Tesla, especially if we're looking at the longer term time frame. I would not be sad about Tesla deciding to do nothing for a while because I know that that would actually end up helping the share price rather than hurting it. But when we do go to these levels where it is so disconnected and so detached from a lot of these indicators, it doesn't necessarily worry me because again, longer term time frame, we won't even need to worry about this chart over here because many are expecting 3,000, 5,000, etc dollars per share but again for the near term some of you guys have been wondering where is tesla going to be going uh within these next couple of days and weeks and maybe even months right so i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of this played out in the month of january towards the new year because a lot of people will probably be starting to liquidate some of their positions so level number one that we should be watching out for i stated that in the beginning 970 dollars per share because out of all these indicators that is where tesla usually goes the most right so about 970 dollars a share area and let me just remind you everyone that as long as tesla continues to climb higher and higher these retracements it would decide to go also higher and higher. It would move with it because that would mean that this line would decide to move up with the share price and so with this red line. So if Tesla decides, let's say, in the next few days goes all the way to $1,200 per share, then this line is going to move up with it. So instead of $970 a share would be the retracement for level number one, this level may climb up all the way to about $1,000 a share or 980. You guys understand what I'm trying to say. We'll basically move up as the share price moves up, but as the share price decides to move down, this level may also very well move down with it or stay the same because it does collect data from a specific number of time. And so over here, this red mark, this is where I'm getting this $850 a share area that I mentioned. And again, it even goes lower to $840 or $839 a share. And keep in mind, everyone, that Elon Musk has yet to sell his full position. I think that's important to note just because especially in the month of January, we will really start to see what the sentiment is around a lot of these big cap stocks. Uh, as for the S&P 500, really quickly, if you go back over here, we could see that there's no reason to blame Tesla today for why it decided to go down and why that equity went down. Because, I mean, look at the SPY, right? We are down uh, from the all-time highs of around $470 a share, and now we are at about $450 a share. And that is not normal for the SPY in terms of just going down 20 points. Um, especially on a day like today. I mean, it is normal on the longer term time frame, but in a one day time frame going down that much, this really did cause a lot of fear. But when there is a lot of fear, I think that that would usually indicate that there is probably going to be signs of bullishness coming very, very soon. And that is why I would not be surprised if the S&P 500 starts to go up, especially because we have been following this channel for such a long time. I'm going to see if I can try to draw this as accurately as possible on the first time. But basically, this level would look something like this, and that is definitely not the best way to draw it. Basically, what I'm trying to indicate, though, is that the S&P 500 did break a lot of levels today, which is why, again, Tesla also went down. And before I end this video, I just wanted to mention real quick that no, I am not a Tesla bear. In fact, I'm trying to accumulate as many shares as I can. And if it decided to go all the way back to 970, that would be perfect. If it decided to go all the way back to 850, that would be even more perfect, right? So regardless of whether it's 970 or 850 or 840, doesn't really matter. That would just be more of an opportunity to buy more shares. But I do want to say, though, that sometimes people just end up buying shares way too early. And I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not advising anyone to do anything. But I wouldn't be surprised, is all I'm trying to say, if Tesla did go and retrace back to some levels that we already discussed. So I'm not going to mention it again, now, especially because we also have just that fundamental catalyst that Elon Musk has yet to sell. So with that being said, I would love to know what your thoughts are on all of this. Let me know in the comment section below and give this video a like and I'll see you guys in the next video.